Hello Scorpios, welcome to Wednesday, August 30th, 2023. It is a full blue super moon tonight and I've already encountered two drivers today just stopped in the middle of the road like some sort of glitch in the matrix. <laughs> so be careful if you're out driving today. Um, this morning while I was meditating on your energy, I feel a little bit like stiff in the neck and shoulders and I don't always feel that way it's like it's energetic so I've also been experiencing some synchronicities regarding the opening of the throat chakra and moving kundalini energy up through the throat chakra um a blue snake came up in a reading yesterday that I was listening to and uh like almost every time I've listened to a reading lately or done a reading there's some sort of like frog in the throat uh coming up so frogs might be important to you um opening your throat chakra might be something you're working on you might be a singer a speaker um or just learning how to express yourself and your truth anyway let's move right on happy wednesday spirit what kind of messages can we bring out for scorpio today please guide and protect this reading and bring us a lovely message for our Scorpios today. Maybe we'll take all of those, we'll see. So there's two on top of my coffee cup. Faith and the six of wands is what this would be reversed. This is all a recall from yesterday's reading. It's sort of weird that that came out. We're gonna reshuffle. So whatever you were thinking about, perhaps like look at yesterday's reading again, because um, we did do a reading for the full moon energy yesterday. And that was specifically related to like understanding projection and like where projections uh, have occurred in your life, like taking responsibility for your own projections and then um, cutting out like a narcissistic or um, toxic relationship energy, whatever that is for you. However, toxicity has manifested in your relationships. This full moon is for you to let go of those cycles, especially if they're larger repeating karmic cycles or uh, family inheritance, generational inheritance. Messages for Scorpios today, Spirit. The scribe. Yeah, so especially related to the throat chakra here, this guy is speaking using the language of light. Uh, there's an ibis on either side of this and a golden bee here down at the bottom with... I think, yeah, this is like the dung beetle on top and then the third eye is closed, but... He's got this sword that's indicating the language of light and being able to write down uh, truth. So you might actually be um, writing down some sort of occult knowledge has been coming up. Some sort of like manifesto or like means of achieving spiritual knowledge for people. You might be creating some sort of like guide or some sort of step-by-step um, -step process that allows people to work through their energy to awaken. Um, with the bee here underneath the wheel and the ibis on either side. So the ibis is the sacred bird of Egypt, um, ancient Egypt. And it's kind of in the same shape as like the hieroglyph for the throat if I recall correctly, and this golden bee indicates like busyness. So your business right now literally is to um, write down, I would start with like your beliefs and how you came to those. That's what's coming to me. And I think it's gonna help other people also. So literally um, spending time writing that down. I'm not feeling very drawn to these cards today. I think with this Ace of Pentacles, the Seed, the Journey, your five of um, cups reversed. This is telling me you're coming out of whatever energy of disappointment you're in and entering into action. 
So we'll draw from the Thoth Tarot deck with this scribe here, um, who I think in this deck indicates the Page of Swords. Whoa, okay, the tower jumped out with the sun, science, the eon, reverse, love, ten of wands, ten of pentacles, okay, so this deck wanted to speak today, um, yesterday the tower and science came out, science has been coming out a lot for you with the tower, so this is you understanding that you have the tools to create this um, this manifesto or this like rule book sort of for your life that's gonna help other people with theirs. This is your tower that came out recently, um, even yesterday is being viewed now as like the undoing of whatever oppression you've dealt with before. And you're creating like a new um, paradigm, which is why the Eon is here reversed under your Ten of Pentacles. Literally writing down how you undid whatever internalized oppression you um, were experiencing or however you have re-experienced, I guess, religion or spirituality, which has been coming up a lot also. Writing that down, sharing your journey uh, is going to put you in this ten of pentacles this two of cups like love energy and then get you I'm, it says oppression here but what i'm getting from this ten of wands is that your self-expression is um going to sort of put you in a place where you're going to need to continue to express yourself and it might be work but it's the ending of a cycle of oppression for you. And that's why the sun is underneath. You're going to help enlighten other people. Uh, the eight of swords here is you undoing overthinking. Like you're, you're perhaps oppressing yourself at this point by overthinking this because you already have the tools. You've already reached that point and your tower has already come down. Um, so the Ten of Pentacles also indicates, uh, it's it's not just like material wealth, it says Virgo. Whoop. So you might have been overcoming a cycle of lack and that's going to manifest within this Virgo season by September 21st. Um, you're going to be in your abundance. This is specifically related to, um, well, with the Two of Cups here, it's either romantic relationships or... Um, Or your relationship with yourself essentially taking authority over your own life and being your own divine feminine or masculine or however you identify it's it's being in gender fluidity and allowing yourself to like embody the energy of masculine or femi feminine however that and whenever that needs to occur and knowing when to turn one on and the other one off and etc um especially with this prince of cups below here it's going to below your two of cups um, this is rulership of this energy, just being able to um, use, this is wind and or air and water, so being able to use the inspiration from your emotions to um, create this sun energy, get out of your overthinking and be in, you, in your creations. So what I'm also getting here, I saw this sign yesterday on the road that said, dragging chains creates sparks. And as a water sign, I was just thinking to myself, like, that's really interesting because we are chained to things like energetically, right? And if you're in this air and water energy and kind of like drowning in your like water energy, dragging chains or attaching yourself to ideas or to things or people energetically is like, what's gonna help create the spark in your life. So what is it that you're attached to? What is it that you feel is the rules or are the rules rather of the life you've encountered? What are the, what are the cycles that you've seen? And, and begin to write those down and spend time with writing them out and expressing them so that you can get out of this overthinking energy 
and so that your only oppressor essentially is yourself like cultivating your mind to bring these creations out yeah okay anything else for scorpio we'll clarify with the tarot here um what i want to know i think is what is this oppression sun adjustment energy this is the end what i see is it's the end of a cycle of overthinking and the beginning of a new cycle of creation in the external what is this oppression okay this one just wants to come out the five of cups so injustice okay the five of cups and justice you might be in a legal situation um you might be looking at like the injustices um that have brought you to the place that you were sort of in regarding this five of cups like seeing your spilled cups and knowing like those aren't even for you anyways um you're gonna pick up these two cups go across your bridge so i think with the two of cups here and the prince of cups like this is your water energy and your tower reversed um This is, I hate to say it, but it's like an energy of self-pity. It's like an energy of being um, so caught up in your lack or what it is that you've been through or the ending of this eon. Um, and the beginning of a new one that you haven't seen sort of the beauty right in front of you. The world reversed again. Uh, oh no, the eons, not the world. You have the world reversed and the eon reversed. The eon reversed is judgment in this deck. The eon is judgment. And then you have the world reversed. And then you have justice. Okay, so with the Eon reversed here, indicating judgment, um, reversed, the judgment angel, and then you have the world reversed here, what I'm seeing is that you have sort of made, oh, two of cups reversed, what the heck, okay, so you've made a science, or you your science, the thing that you've studied to get into this sort of scribe energy, three of hearts, is like, it's feeling like sort of everything you've encountered up until now has come from a paradigm that is like greater than you. Like a, a full, maybe I, I like, I want to say like industrial capitalism itself somehow is, is, is this, this like Eon reversed, the world reversed, two of cups reversed, broken heart, science reversed. It's like understanding that industrial capitalism has led us to a certain point with a star. Yeah, and what the heck? And ten of swords reversed. And that the sort of sacrifices that we've made to get to a place where we can like have every convenience in our, you know, modern society has really done a lot of damage to our soul potential and our understanding of what it is to be like natural beings in the world um i was reading something yesterday the wheel of fortune reverse i was reading something yesterday in the lost language of plants about the impacts of uh pharmaceuticals and the industrial revolution on nature and just how like we went from recycling our waste as um like our, our like people used to recycle their waste into the landscape by being like hunter gatherers they would just kind of you know poop outdoors or whatever and then that would be recycled back into the land and every individual person creates up to like i think it was 1300 pounds of waste um liquid and solid per year um but now that we're not you know hunter gatherers and with the uh development of agriculture especially in europe in the west um 
So there first it was cesspools. There were cesspools that people would like put all of their waste in and then it would rain and the cesspool would flood and then that would sort of seep back into the land. And then there were like the development of major cities and with the development of major cities, people would um, use their chamber pots and throw their chamber pots out into the gutters and then the rain would wash the solid waste into the river or they would have um, privies or outhouses that like dropped waste directly into the river. Um, so I think what I'm seeing here is just that uh, with, so with these waste products, like kind of not being recycled back into the environment, we had things like cholera and typhoid and um, all these diseases. And then these diseases um, occurred kind of in tandem with the decimation of plant knowledge and um, being able to like heal ourselves that sort of occurred in tandem with the witch hunts and getting rid of like uh, what do you call it? Just pagan. You want to, I mean, pagan is probably not the right word. Pagan is non-Christian, right? So just fundamental knowledge of nature and how to use like the weeds and the herbs around us to be able to prevent, um, health issues and to be able to like live in a way that's sort of more aligned with the rules of nature. Um, so we've created this like reductionist science that has allowed us to take out the main ingredients from plants to create pharmaceuticals that are like powerful and pharmaceutical industry is like a 13.5 billion dollar industry according to this book when it was written and that's only progressing because right now the way that we use pharmaceuticals especially in like behavioral medicine is uh one of the ways i've heard it compared is the equivalent of like trying to fill up your um oil by pouring oil all over the engine block instead of just putting it where the oil goes. Um, because we can't, we don't know enough about the brain or about the body yet to target certain receptors. We can just um, sort of right now make our best guess and our best guess is creating um, waste, like pharmaceutical waste, page of cups. Uh, pharmaceutical waste is actually like it seeps back into the environment, like the things that can't be processed by our bodies, we that becomes part of our waste and the way it goes back into the environment um, creates like natural repercussions that we just don't know um, the end result of and potentially won't ever know the end result of because some of those chemicals don't break down for like a long time, longer than our lifetimes. So um, I guess another thing to consider is in the development of those pharmaceuticals or in any, really anything that's coming to us from another country is the land that's um, infiltrated in order to create those goods. Like in the rainforest, for example, people go into the rainforest to get the um, plants that they want to use for pharmaceuticals or they get pharmaceutical or plant medicinal knowledge from like the local practitioners and then they sort of bottle it up sell it and and uh make a profit profit off of it hierophant um why is this all coming up right now this is part of <laughs> Okay. All right. I see. Okay. The queen of pentacles reversed. Jesus. This is all coming up right now because there's a part of you that fundamentally um, disagrees with the way that things have come to be. And I think that this is really common right now uh, in our country where people are just like, it's a mess. There's, you know, right versus left and we don't know what to do. And um, the aliens are here, you know, like people are just kind of like inundated with misinformation and you have done the inner work um overcome your heartbreak overcome these sort of ideas of injustice and things that are outside of yourself in a major way even related to like especially related to the environment and like global capitalism like things that are out of your control um to prevent and this is bringing to you um abundance because you're able to write down essentially that like what you've been through by doing the inner work spiritually um is an understanding of like how what 
we suppress, especially in terms of like um, trying to treat our depression perhaps, or especially in terms of trying to like avoid um, emotions. Emotions is coming up a lot. I have an Ace of Cups here on the bottom, Two of Cups, Prince of Cups, the star, like emotion, a lot of emotional like um, energy here. Uh, working on bringing those emotions to light in a safe and healthy way um, and being able to do that shadow work wherein you're actually encountering like the demons of your unconscious um, is making you uh, individualized. You've become individuated is what I want to say. And in becoming individuated and doing that work, you've so Carl Jung said, right, our quote yesterday was to abase yourself, become the animal in yourself, lest you treat your brother like an animal. Ten of cups here. Um, basically, in allowing your instincts to guide your actions by trusting that nature and natural law always sort of moves towards an energy of equilibrium, you're understanding that the processes that we've used to control um, our environment in order to avoid uh, especially emotional um, work has created this like collective karma and this global sort of like chaos that we're in right now and where you're at is basically showing people a way to be gentle with themselves emotionally to face their deepest scariest emotional um fears and overcome that feeling of needing to control or needing to suppress so that we can be healthier communally so that we're not treating our you know brothers like animals so that we're not living in our projections and then demonizing our projections when really it's just a part of us that we've rejected like you're teaching people how to integrate by writing down what it is that you've learned in this spiritual journey of yours and with the king and queen of pentacles reversed here um, you have the two of cups reversed and the, the ten of swords reversed, and then you have the two of cups here with the ace of cups reversed. You have the five of cups, ten of cups, ten of pentacles, the hierophant, justice, judgment, the world reversed. The world reversed with the king and queen of pentacles is a reevaluation of what it is that's important. Uh, materialism, you're, you're sort of re, yeah, here we go, truth. Um, you're sort of re-evaluating materialism and how putting our emphasis of what enoughness is onto materialism is actually like it's a form of death it's a form of living that is like it's like zombified it's like a zombified existence and you're teaching people how while oppression can come from nature and it's like forces right now it's currently coming from ourselves and what we have suppressed and what we've tried to control and with the hierophant here and justice and the ace of cups reversed you're teaching people how to complete this cycle of facing themselves like unveiling their emotions to themselves like basically helping to resurrect what it is that keeps them alive like in the present moment um and brings like a sense of joy and 
um, prosperity and showing them what that is outside of materialism and even outside of like basic ideas of emotional happiness because sometimes just doing the work on ourselves can be really, really difficult and it's not a happy process. It's quite difficult. But in encountering that, ha that unhappy process by allowing ourselves to go through that unhappy process and not trying to control it or suppress it, we again like work in tandem with our animal instincts in such a way that we're not projecting them onto other people, that we're not like discarding the waste into cesspools that then like uh result in you know rivers being on fire that was an example that was used in this uh the lost language of plants book i was like appalled like one of these rivers was so polluted it was on fire one day it just woo um so you're basically helping people to understand how to like let the waters of their lives flow so that their inner rivers aren't on fire from the waste that they're trying to like forget about seeing you know or to discard onto others in the form of projection Woo. okay this was like a really long weird reading um with the five of cups the hierophant and justice coming in your five of cups is telling me that you've walked away from a lot of disappointing um potential fulfillments even things that perhaps were actually there to like could have made you happy if you could have just sort of bought into this idea of like happiness is available to you if you just accept it but you feel like there is some need here to bring attention to this like world reversed um judgment reverse energy like bring some attention to the sort of um, I, I, I don't know why hypocrisy is coming up but the hypocrisy of like just modern life I think you know like we're like just trying to be in a healed state when we're all operating from this sort of state of like negating nature or um negating spirituality that's what the science reverse card is telling me also it's indicating reductionism and reductionism occurred um in science because of uh, one of the famous figures mentioned is Rene Descartes he's responsible for the saying I think therefore I am but he is also responsible for uh creating the art of vivisection which is to dissect something while it's alive uh because he assumed that animals didn't feel pain um which is, I think, pretty psychotic, if you ask me. Um, so there's this sort of, I guess, this energy of encounter encountering some, like, massive, uh, I guess, hypocrisies in how we uh, live, just what we take for granted in, in our day-to-day -day lives. Like, the, the way that uh, this came up yesterday, too, the, or the day before, the way that we... Um, you know, even when we eat plants, like we're taking the life of a plant. When we eat bacon, we're engaging in the um, like the the death process of a pig. And just like instead of separating ourselves from that, like learning how to do the emotional work by accepting like the responsibility of being a life on this planet, integrated with other life on this planet. So whatever you're writing about, it has to do with that. Um, or whatever it is that you're teaching about or speaking about. Speaking is, is one that's coming through. Um, is about that. Okay. Well, uh, I want to do... Uh, past... I think I want to do a past, present, future real quick. That was a long, winded, um, kind of trippy full moon energy woo all right how can scorpio begin this process 
of speaking their truth, of living in their truth, and helping to apparently teach other people or speak to other people. Um, this bee is standing out to me as something that's like busy and uh, well integrated in their community. So um, bees also have queens that eject or omit, uh, emit rather pheromones uh, or hormones that like send signals to the other bees. So it might just be like your being in the energy that you're in is like emitting hormones in such a way that's creating a sort of hive mind um, around you and the people around you and the time master 57 you might be 57 um, Five and seven, those numbers have been coming out. You might be engaged in the energy of change. And then seven indicates to me the healing of the inner child, um, the spiritual work that allows us to like be there for ourselves, essentially take authority over our, our own lives. So the Time Master, um, he talks about being able to be in the present moment. And the more consciousness you bring to the present moment, the less distracted you are, the more time is essentially available to you in the present moment because like say you're trying to multitask right and you have five things going at once uh maybe you're a barista this is coming through and you're trying to make five drinks at once and then you are so caught up like putting the whipped cream topping on one drink that you forget the other one is heating and then you like burn the milk instead of steaming it to the point where it needs to be and you have to like redo the drink or whatever the time master means present moment awareness to the extreme being in such focused concentration on what you're doing that you're drawing in the energy of time to your creations you're basically so absorbed in what you're doing that you you lose track of time um time master reverse is telling me that you're distracted uh especially with this b here you're maybe trying to do too many things at once and trying to communicate too many things at once or uh, avoiding communicating what it is that you want to communicate because, or by distracting yourself, like you're allowing distractions in. Another energy um, regarding this time master reverse, according to what we were just talking about, all of this global capitalist nonsense, um, is that a lot of the time, we are addicted to distraction because it keeps us out of having to face ourselves. It keeps us out of having to do the emotional work and um, materialism came up in this reading like quite heavily. Materialism is in essence uh, to a point d distraction. Like if, if you have more than you actually need to survive, then you might want to ask yourself or you might encourage others to ask themselves like what it is that they're distracting themselves from or what it is that they're trying to add to their existence and like what that symbolizes um on just a really fundamental natural level i guess what else i usually wouldn't ever like i think open up that way um about global capitalism <laughs> like but that's what was coming through in our reading today so the ancient ones yeah so getting one um the ancient ones getting back to basics is what this card tells me and getting back to basics in a way that like puts us back in the rhythm of nature flowing towards equilibrium if you're suppressing something if you're trying to control something like what is it that you're actually afraid of and i remember this one moment like feeling these really really strong feelings of um something i couldn't quite identify this was a few years ago um and i was in a, in a like an abusive relationship and um i was just laying on the floor like in my apartment alone and feeling abandoned 
is what came up later but I didn't know what the feeling was all I knew was I felt like extreme like fear of feeling that feeling and I asked myself like what is the worst thing that could happen if I just laid here and kept breathing it was probably the closest I ever felt to like just not wanting to exist anymore and I got to this point where I was just like well if all I do is lay here and continue to breathe like it's just a feeling and it will move through me if I just breathe and so I just like laid on the floor and kept breathing and I thought eventually of like Dory from Finding Nemo you know just keep swimming and I realized like I was sitting there in my feelings of like like pre-linguistic um neglect like when we experience neglect or abandonment or abuse you know as very little kids before we can express ourselves and before we have a way to contextualize it that's left in our somatic archaeology it's like it's held in our body and it creates this imprint of an emotion that we can't identify it just becomes this sort of irrational fear and it's the thing we will most like run from and this ancient ones card here um is telling me that To spend time in nature just kind of breathing through those feelings is, is what's coming through. There's also this woman I was listening to um, on TikTok and she was talking about doing mushrooms and how she thought that she was like hitting the peak of her trip and then the trip just kept going and going and going and she was like ah like feeling this existential fear and by the time she finally recognized what it was that she was fearing, she understood it was just this like deep-seated abandonment issue and it resolved when she faced it. But the the feeling of the fear itself is like, it's fight or flight, it's oh my God, I'm gonna die. It's that feeling. And the ego will run so strongly from that feeling that it'll want to, it'll it equates the ego death with actual death and you get to a point of like, oh my God, I can't handle this feeling. I can't handle this emotion. Like I'll just, you know, be done. But like, if you just keep breathing, you just keep breathing. Then the feeling, you know, when we address it can pass. And I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not, ex I'm not trying to express to anybody that they should like do that kind of work on their own or that you should ever be feeling that way. And if you are feeling that way, because we're on a YouTube channel, I need to say like you you sh should find professional help or call a hotline. Um, and I think it's the 988 number. But if you're in a presence of mind to be able to meditate your way through those emotions then the resolution occurs and um, we're able to tune back in with a part of ourselves that exists, I wanna say beyond time. Um, it exists with the spirit, the spirit world and acknowledges spirit in all things. And yeah. Okay. We're going to end this off with an inner child reading. Eight of Swords. These cards don't have reverse meanings. Nine eight eight. Um, whoa, that's weird. I literally just said that number. Um, so if you're really struggling with that energy, please do call the hotline.
love these cards. They feel super positive. And I just want to read from the book for these because the messages are just beautiful. Snow White is this card here. Hidden within the fairy tale of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves is a major lesson concerning service to humanity and the utilization of wise discrimination. Just before Snow White is born, her mother is sewing and pricks herself with a needle. As the blood flows, she wishes for a child with lips as red as blood, skin as white as snow, and hair as black as ebony. Snow White soon comes into the world, but her mother dies during the birth. Snow White's stepmother is a beautiful but wicked, vain, and jealous queen. When she asks the magic mirror symbolizing the search for perfect beauty, an aspect of the sign of Virgo, which rules this card, who is the fairest in the land, the mirror replies, Snow White. The queen is so angry that she then orders a huntsman to kill Snow White and bring back her heart as proof of the deed. The huntsman, representing humanity, mortality, and humility, has compassion for the young girl, lets her go, and brings back the heart of a young animal for the stepmother. Snow White, at seven years of age, is alone in the forest, seeking shelter and protection. She is on a symbolic wisdom pilgrimage. She finds a small cottage with seven beds and seven bowls, the number of seven signifying a major spiritual transition. Um, just sort of as an aside, seven is also the number of chakras in our body, so aligning our spirituality with our body. Um, when the dwarfs find her, after working all day and the diamond mines in the diamond mine, she is fast asleep in one of their beds. In the original version of the story, the dwarves are gnomes. The gnomes represent earthly wisdom, the inner light shining from within the depths of our planet. Snow White begins to grow into her higher wisdom by taking care of them, cleaning their house, and making meals for them. The wicked queen finds out that Snow White is still alive by asking the magic mirror again who is the fairest in the land. Over many years, this stepmother tries to kill Snow White three more times. The first time, disguised as a merchant selling lace, the queen gives some material to Snow White who pulls it too tight around her waist. She faints due to a restriction of her breathing or spirit and is found by the gnomes who revive her. In the second encounter, the stepmother transforms herself into a woman selling combs. Snow White is tricked again and buys one, poisoning her head and scalp or ego identity. The gnomes rescue her once again. In the third experience, the stepmother changes herself into, into an old woman selling apples that she has secretly poisoned. Snow White, still lacking in wise discrimination, takes a bit of a poisoned apple and appears to fall dead. Actually, she falls into a deep coma from which the gnomes cannot revive her. The earthly wisdom has run its course and Snow White is ready for her final initiation. She cannot stay in the cottage or darkness forever, so the gnomes place her in a glass coffin where the light streaming through the forest can illuminate her body, heart, and soul. She needs to come into the light. Her inner service or dutiful work for the gnomes, cleaning, nurturing others, being humble, has been completed. The prince comes, he picks her up, takes her to his horse, and as he carries her, the piece of poisoned apple is dislodged from her throat. This is a symbolic clearing of the throat chakra. Holy crap, that's what we started with. It's a holy moly, I mean. Um, whoa. Um, a re-empowerment of Snow White's primal wisdom. United with her animus, the prince, she has become crowned by the seventh chakra in wholeness and light. Traditionally, this card in the Major Arcana is known as the Hermit and is often portrayed as a wise old man or woman crone. Through the pilgrimage and odyssey of Snow White, we learn about becoming whole when all the aspects of the soul life and personality life are fused and integrated. Living in an isolated or separate state will not bring happiness and contentment. The active work we are called to do in this life is only partially physical, emotional, and mental. There is also our soul work, our service to humanity, and the opportunity and challenge to be a light to the world. When this card appears in your reading, you are ready to receive the buried treasures of your own wisdom that dwell in the deep caverns of your ancestral past. Just as the seven dwarves assist Snow White by reviving her from the wicked perils of transformation and showering her with gems from the cave mines, you are assisted by your, sorry, spiritual helpers and guides. This is a card of service to humanity. Um, as you open your own heart, and soul to the treasures of your own destiny, you will find many new opportunities to illuminate and brighten the world around you. Um, so this is the Hermit 
ruled by Virgo, uh, clarified by this Eight of Swords. The infinity symbol appears here and here. We have Archangel Michael as the guardian of swords or ace of swords here. Five of crystals and the six of hearts. So what I want to say here is that this gnome is doing the work of building a new ego identity with this pentacles here. And he's doing so through... Um, taking practical steps, but also whistling as he works, right? And this is under the Snow White card. And that, that work is, it's practical, but it's also the work of like aligning your chakras. And maybe you do yoga, maybe you meditate, maybe your spiritual work as this scribe card had come out is the practical work. Like you're, you've done the practical work and it's time for you to like speak about that. Uh, the Eight of Swords is the overthinking card uh these kids are in the dark going through this tunnel with holding their torches alight and there's a spider up here in the caverns weaving the web of this story so you might still be weaving the web of this story the infinity symbol is not quite complete here um the completion also indicated by this eight of crystals or eight of pentacles is basically you using your swords or your ability to speak your ability to write uh, your ability to think, to complete the material uh, cycle in to build a new ego identity. Um, you're building a new ego identity with the protection of Archangel Michael, who um, offers the wisdom of the sword Excalibur or the, the king and brings the dove of peace. His name also means he who is like God, as in um, he who can understand basically the necessity of darkness in order to show light, which is Scorpio's like realm. That's, that's what Scorpios are all about. So part of what we were talking about in just the previous poll was showing people how to illuminate like those dark inner places in a peaceful way, breathing through it, using uh, spiritual techniques to overcome what it is we've been trying to suppress and control because suppressing and controlling, especially from a reductionist perspective, has sort of for too long undermined spirituality. And now we're all kind of needing to turn to some version of spirituality or a higher perspective to embrace a new like global ego identity. Uh, the six of hearts indicates community and lifting others up. So being able to lift up others through your words through your wisdom and through accepting your new ego identity perhaps as somebody who spends time alone and studies the occult and esoteric knowledge and then talks about it or um, writes about it or speaks about it uh, whatever you've been through whatever you've experienced you're being encouraged to take practical steps and cheerful steps whistle all your work um, to bring that truth to light and lift others up. So, um, thank you for being here today. That was a bizarre reading, but it is a new, it's a full moon, super moon, blue moon, uh, August 30th, um, in Virgo season. And I think it's great that this like Virgo card sort of ruled, uh, the hermit kind of ruled our, our reading. Um, pay attention to, your throat chakra, bringing anything up that you need to, uh, maybe drink some nice tea or um, sing, try and release that energy. And if you want to have a personal reading with me, you can order one on my Etsy. I have various options, or you can donate on Patreon if that is something that pleases you. Thank you so much. Love and light. Bye.